Today in the Sartorial Kitchen, we are going Korean. That's right, it's a Korean tour de force. Starting with breakfast, it's my Greek momo. Grow peaches with yogurt and granola. Next, I'm making a spicy beef vegetable soup for lunch. And for dinner, it's an orange honey glazed chicken with orange rice. So why don't you pull up a chair and dine with me? Everybody, you have not read wrong. We are going Korean today. So I've wanted to do this for a while. Ever since I was with my ex at this lovely, charming little restaurant downtown that serves um, Korean food. It's homemade, um, everything is fresh, the plating is lovely, and it's big, bold flavors. So I decided to do a tour de force. We're going to do a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we're starting with breakfast here. Um, now what's funny is the name of this dish is called Greek Momo, but um, I have a friend who stayed over in Korea for a, a hot minute on some business. And he said, this is like, this is a big thing to eat it all the time. It's kind of like a quick grab and go. But of course, being as extra as I am, I'm gonna jazz it up some. So I've got um, some brown sugar here, some <clears throat> oats. To them, I'm gonna add some sliced almonds. So basically a Greek momo, it's fruit, granola and parfait. But I'm going to jazz up the fruit a little bit. I've got my peaches here. It's generally done with peaches. I'm going to grill those on my grill pan to make them a little extra. And then they usually do like a plain yogurt, but I'm going to kind of jazz mine up a little bit with some honey. And then um, just to give it a little something extra here, a little cinnamon. Just kind of sprinkle it in there. It's going to give it some extra flavor. Honey, I'm going to drizzle a little here on this um, granola I'm making as well. And we're just going to toss everything together. And it's going to go into my toaster oven for a hot minute while I grill my peaches. This is a really quick, simple dish. I understand why they love it. I've never actually, I've had these components before, but I've never actually like had them all together. But I don't see why it's um, wouldn't be delicious. It all sounds great. So yeah, just a couple tablespoons of sugar. This is a basic kind of granola recipe. I always like to throw in nuts to give it a little more texture. And we just kind of toss everything together and then we're going to spread it out on our baking sheet. Everything's going to get nice and toasty. We don't want it to burn. We just want it to get a little color on it. So really it's going to take about maybe five, six minutes tops in my toaster oven. And we're going to pop those in on a medium heat and I will move on to my... Now, um, normally I would love to go grab these off my tree and really do them fresh, but they're not quite in season yet. But maybe I'll do something... Um, next season and you can see my beautiful fruit trees so you basically i just came down the middle here to go along the pith or the uh, seed as they want to call it you just come all the way around and if you give it a little twist it should come right in half and we're just going to bring our knife on the inside here careful with your fingers there and just kind of come in here and kind of get behind that seed, get into the fruit, and pop that little bugger right out. All right, guys, got my seeds out. I'm going to just lightly set these onto my skillet. I've got that on a low heat. I don't want them to burn. I just want them to get nice and um, get those nice kind of ground marks on them. If it's too high, the sugar is going to caramelize too soon. The natural sugars are the fruit, and it's going to become bitter. So I'm just going to kind of let those go. My granola is still working. So we're going to move on to my yogurt. So like I said, I've just got some plain Greek yogurt here. That's normally how they do it. Um, I'm not a huge yogurt person to begin with. I like to have a little something in my yogurt, some kind of fruit or some kind of sweet component. So I'm just going to drizzle a little of this honey in here. This is just some uh, clover honey. I'm going to do about a teaspoon, I think. It will be good. I'll just come in here and give that a little stir to get it incorporated. 
And what's nice about the yogurt, it gives you a little tang, um, some slight acidity. Because a lot of the other things we have going on, is it's um, nice and sweet. So it's kind of nice to have something a little different. Um, and then you're getting more of your food groups in there. Check this out. Nice and golden brown. I'm just going to uh, give this a little toss. Mm. So like I said, it's got some color to it, but it's not too done. And it's going to be a little sweet from the brown sugar and the honey. It's going to add some nice texture there. So I think a uh, bowl is going to be best for this. And I'm just going to grab the fruit. It should be nice and tender. I think two is good. We'll save the others for a rainy day. And I just want to kind of show you guys the peaches first. See those lovely grill marks across? Mm. And you get that caramelized sugar kind of thing going on. Now we're going to come in. We're going to get a little bit of our sweetened yogurt. I'm just going to dollop that right on top. It may melt just a little bit. The uh, peaches are still kind of hot. And then I'm going to come in and scrape up some of this um, granola topping with the nuts and the the oats and the sugar. And I would say breakfast is served. <laughs> I'm going to come in here and just kind of get everything in one bite. Just kind of cut into that peach. Mm. And then come in with everything. Mmm. 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 Ooh. Peaches. I love... What I love about peaches... Juicy. Bursting with flavor. You bite into that and poof. The yogurt. Just the right amount of honey. Gives you that kind of sweet, acidic kind of thing. And then you can right now... I'm crunching into those oats and almonds. Mmm. Mmm. Simple, but elegant and delicious. Welcome back, everybody. So we had breakfast. Wasn't that fun? And now we're moving on to lunch. I'm making a spicy beef vegetable soup. I've got some fresh ingredients here. I have some canned ingredients. I have my aromatics, my seasonings. It's going to be a really bold and flavorful soup. And um, like I mentioned earlier, difference between like Korean cooking and um, other styles of Asian cooking it's all about presentation and it's all about bold flavors and let me tell you this soup lands an A plus on both this is another one of those dishes um, I had once before at this quaint little Korean restaurant downtown first time I had ever been there and it's um, my ex's it was his favorite um, little restaurant and that's the first time I ever really tried Korean food and you know I like to broaden my horizons and I love to try new things and you know I was pleasantly pleasantly surprised. Now, normally I dice my onions this time um, I did little rounds sliced that's gonna go right into my soup pan and I want those to cook down and get nice and caramelized and I'm going to let this cook for a little bit while I do I'm going to move on to my mushrooms recipe calls for shiitake but my market did not have shiitake but this mushroom will do um, thing about the mushroom it's kind of like a sponge it's going to soak up a lot of flavors it's going to add us some nice texture and some nice meatiness to the soup and it's going to play nicely with the beef and all the other flavors I have going on. Guys, those are my mushrooms. I'm going to dump those in as well. Now we always season in layers here, so I'm going to go ahead and come in here with some salt. 
and some pepper. And I'm going to give that a stir. This onion's already starting to caramelize nicely. I'm going to add just a hair more oil because the mushroom is are really going to soak up that oil. And um, everything's going to burn. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to add just a little more oil. I'm going to saute those around. Let those mushrooms kind of cook down. And the mushrooms don't take as long as the onions. That's why I like to do the onions first. I just want them to get kind of some softness to them and really let those flavors develop. Oh, yeah. Onions and mushrooms are looking great. They smell even better. I wish you guys could smell them. Now it's time for my aromatics. So, garlic. I would use fresh, but, well, for one, this container is almost empty. And two, I like kind of that garlic oil that you get from the preserved garlic, which is going to add another layer of flavor. So that's um, about a tablespoon of garlic, and I just want some of that garlic oil. And I always wait to add that, as you guys know, because the garlic will burn if you add it too soon, and there's nothing worse than burnt garlic. i got a few other things here. I've got some um, minced ginger. I'm going to add um, about a teaspoon of that. Ginger's a little stronger. I don't need as much of it. And I'm just kind of stirring everything in as I go. And that ginger, immediately you can smell that ginger. And then a, um, about a teaspoon of um, minced lemongrass as well. Now again, you can use the fresh on any of these if you prefer. Um, well, I like the mince. It's a more concentrated flavor. And then you're saving time on kind of breaking down those raw ingredients. I've also got um, some Korean chili sauce. And this you can just kind of add to taste as much as you like. Um, I'm going to do about a couple tablespoons here. Now this is like a sweet chili sauce, so it's not just like direct, like a crazy amount of heat. And then I've also got some sriracha here. Now this is hot, so I'm going to add just about a teaspoon of that, no more. So I want this to be of like a fragrant, kind of flavorful hot, but I don't want it so hot that it's going to uh, ruin the taste buds. Oh, and you can smell that heat now. Just the um, fragrance coming from the uh, skillet, the saucepan here. It's opening up those sinuses, something fierce. <laughs> so good. Okay, I've turned that down to low. I kind of want to let this simmer. I've got my beef stock here. This is just one container of beef stock. And this is fortified, so it's got um, a lot of kind of good flavors in it already. And it's going to really go nicely with... Um, the other flavors of the soup here, and then I've got some things to add in at the end that are going to give it a little more body, a little more fullness. It's just going to be so good. Ooh, that soup has come to a boil. It smells amazing. Lots of aromatics going on. Everything's kind of speaking to me. So I have three things here, and these have already been processed, so I'm going to put them in last. They just need to come to temperature. And these are the rest of the veggies for our veggie soup. So I've got some water chestnuts here. And I've already opened these and kind of drained the liquid. And I'm just going to kind of dump that right in. And the um, thing about the vegetables with this soup, they're a little different. They're going to give us some different textures and some different flavors. Um, and then this is just a um, can of bean sprouts. Bean sprouts are a big thing in Korea another thing that all my friend was telling me about. And lastly, I have some roast beef here. Now you know me, I'm all about um, canned meats when I can. <laughs> so no, seriously, this is, um, it's shredded beef, so it's like already shredded, which is what we need for this. And instead of fixing like a roast or something just to use for this little soup, you know, perfectly acceptable and it has some nice rich beef flavor 
And the thing is, it's going to um, soak up a lot of the flavors of this broth anyways. So you're really not missing much. And while that happens, we're going to do my scallions here. I always cut off the kind of tops because they're a little, um, sometimes they're a little wilted and just kind of not what I'm looking for. And then I'm just going to come in and just kind of go down and pull away. I like the, uh, the tops are good, but I also want some of the, uh, bottom here because that's going to give me a little more kind of texture. Now we've got those onions in there already, but, um, the thing about scallions, they have a little sweetness to them and a little bit of kind of kick. And these are going to be raw because I'm slicing them now, so it's going to give us a different texture than the other onions. And I'm not going to throw them into the soup, I'm just going to kind of garnish my soup with them. So there we go, that is our scallions. Alright guys, I'm turning this off. Everything should already be cooked through. Now we're going to switch from our wooden spatula to our soup ladle. And I've got my bowl right here. And you can see all of those wonderful ingredients there. The beef, the onions, the sprouts. And you can see on top, um, those red colors there, that's all the heatness that we've added to the soup. Oh, so good. And then I'm just going to garnish here with a little bit of uh, my scallions. And there you have it. Spicy beef vegetable soup. Guys, if this tastes half as good as it smells, I'm in for a treat. Now, I'm no Korean cook. I just cook what I know. These are flavors I've experienced before. I'm just kind of throwing my own thing together, but let's see um, how I did here. Mmm. Blown up its heat. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. So the beef broth, it's really rich, really rich. And then you get the heat, um, the garlic, the chili oil, the sriracha, it just kind of sneaks in there toward the end and just kind of gives a little kick to your palate. And then you get all those wonderful veggies, the mushrooms, the onions, the water chestnuts. Mm. They had some nice, um, surprising textures, kind of unexpected. Mm. And then the fresh green onion just gives a little kick. Kick in the pants. <laughs> so good, guys. I'm going to finish this up, and then we're going to move on to our entree. So stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. So we had breakfast. We had lunch. Now it's time for dinner. So I'm getting some rice started here. I'm making a honey orange glazed chicken. It is um, a bread and fried chicken. It is so good. I'm preparing my rice now. I'm making a fragrant kind of orange rice. Um, so I've got two cups of rice in here now. I'm going to add um, about equal parts liquid. You just need enough liquid to kind of cover the rice. I'm going to go a little shallow on the liquid because we're going to use some of the orange. Now first, I'm going to zest the orange, and I just kind of roll my citrus before I zest it. I want to release those juices, those oils, and then I'm going to zest the orange right into here. The zest is going to really give it a punch of that orange flavor, and you're going to get um, some nice kind of floral notes as well. And then I've got another orange I'm going to be using for the uh, honey orange glaze. It's going to be a little heat to it as well. I think that's pretty good. And of course, we always check for stragglers in the back. Awesome. And we have to juice the orange as well. <laughs> and squeeze, 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 squeeze. This is just going to be a really pungent flavor, flavorful rice. And I've got the chicken stock in there as well, so it's going to give us a little sodium little kind of salt kick so we should be good to go we'll just flip this guy on and we will move on to our chicken guys our rice is going I can already kind of smell it a little bit next we're gonna move on to our chicken now this dish this is the main course I had at this restaurant and I was hooked 
And I've had um, like chicken and rice before, um, Chinese restaurants and things like that. Um, but this is different. They don't do like fried rice. They do a plain white rice and it's very elegant and the way they plated it and everything. And this dish um, had a very, um, had like a sweet, spicy sauce. Um, it, had, um, it was like honey and orange. It was really flavorful. And uh, we've been back a couple times and I had it again. And that's how good it was. So I'm having this out really thin. One, that's how they did it, but two, um, it's going to allow the chicken to cook evenly, and it's going to allow the chicken to cook through before it um, cooks on the outside. So basically, they breaded it in um, panko, which is a Japanese breadcrumb, so you get that really coarse texture on the outside. And then they kind of just tossed it in that glazed kind of sauce and served it over the rice, but it was really elegant the way they plated it. So good. <clears throat> okay, that is one chicken breast, and we move on to the other. And I've got a towel here. I rinsed the chicken first. And I got the towel here just to kind of blot it dry. If it's too wet, it's not going to um, adhere to our paint coat. There is our second breast. And my arm workout for the day. <laughs> this is a nice big breast. This is going to crisp up beautifully and again back on the paper towel and let's get our dredge set up. All right, so a three step, step process here. Make sure my oil is good and hot first. And it sounds like it is. Now, these are pretty big breasts. I'm gonna do one at a time. If I over crab my pan, they're gonna steam. They're not gonna fry and they're not gonna be any good. So I've got some seasoned flour here first. I just took some flour, threw in some salt and pepper I don't want to get too complicated with the flour. I want all the seasonings to be in that glaze that I'm making later. And the flour is just a base coat just to kind of give the eggs something to kind of stick to. And turn that over. And then right into the pink coat. Ooh. Now this I'm going to really press in there deep because I want all the nooks and crannies of this chicken breast to uh, get the panko on it. And if you have to, kind of grab some and work it in. Hmm, so good. Now stand it up, kind of shake any loose panko, and that goes right into the oil. And listen to that sizzle. That is exactly what we want. Now while that breast goes, I'm going to work on my other chicken here. And this is going to cook for um, about three to four minutes on each side until it is cooked through. And that's why we pound it out so it can cook through. And let's get our other breasts. Again, just like before, into the seasoned flour. Make sure we get a nice even coating here on both sides of the breast. Into our egg wash, which is just a couple eggs with a splash of water. Mmm. And last but not least, our panko. Press that in. Make sure we get panko on all pieces of the chicken. Oh, yes. Guys, this is already looking good. Okay, and I'm just gonna let this guy chill out until we're ready to enter the skillet. All right, time to flip this baby over. And I'm gonna be delicate here. I got my tongs. I don't want to, uh, all that oil in the pan to kind of splash it out, so I'm just going to kind of gently slide it over. And look at that beautiful golden brown color. Oh, so good. Sometimes I even like to use this when I'm doing like chicken parm or something. Just throw some Italian seasoning in there. Mm. All right, time to check on our rice. I've set it to keep warm. Oh, beautiful. Look at this. I'm just going to take my little spoon here, fluff this up. If you let it sit too long, it gets kind of sticky, icky, icky. And you can see those flecks of the orange zest in there. Oh, that's going to be so fragrant and so amazing. Now, they just gave me a plain white rice, but I wanted to zhuzh it up a bit. You know me. I have to be a little extra. And I figured the orange is going to play nicely with the glaze I'm making for the chicken. So it's all going to 
be amazing. And this rice looks good. I'm just going to kind of let that rest. I'm going to leave the lid ajar. I want that steam to come out. So it kind of stays warm, but if the steam won't keep the rice from getting overcooked. Okay, that is one piece down. I'm going to pull this out of the oil. And just kind of hold it there. We don't want any grease coming with us. I'm going to set that on the towel. i got another towel here to um, kind of drain the grease. And we'll throw this next guy in. Mmm. Beautiful. Oh. Guys, I can't wait. And I'm turning my skillet off. We're going to gently get this guy out of here. Again, just kind of hold it up. Let any grease drain off. We're just going to set it on this paper towel to drain any additional grease. And while those kind of chill out, I'm going to work on my glaze. So there's three things to this glaze. Another orange, some honey, and some Korean chili flakes. First, I'm going to start with my orange here. Give it a little roll, just like before. And we're going to cut this in half. I only need half of this orange. So I'm not making a ton of glaze here, just enough for my two pieces of chicken. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to squeeze as much of this orange as I can. You should be able to get about a fourth a cup or so. And that's pretty good. And I normally don't do this um, zesting after I've cut into it, but I just only need a little bit of zest. And I'm just going to kind of come around and really, um, not a lot, because again, we're not making a whole lot of um, the glaze here. That's probably um, enough, just enough to give it some fragrance. And I'm just going to kind of run my finger along here. Knock all of that into my cup That's here. That's some honey. Also, um... Close to about a fourth a cup or so. It's going to be about equal parts honey and um, the orange. It's going to be nice, kind of sweet, citrusy. And then for a little heat, I've got the Korean chili flakes. I'm going to really, I'm going to do this into my hand first because I want to control how much of this I get. I only want maybe about an eighth a teaspoon, if that even. I think that looks pretty good, and I'm just going to throw that down in there. I don't want it too hot. It's just supposed to be a subtle heat, just kind of give it a little something. And then I'm going to take my itty bitty whisk, and I'm just going to come in here and give that a stir. Incorporate that honey into the uh, lemon juice, or I'm sorry, orange juice. And that orange juice is going to kind of thin out the honey a little bit, so it's not as sticky, and you can kind of work with it. And that is already looking amazing. Now we can plate our food. Restaurant, I think they toss the chicken in the sauce, but I think I'm just gonna kind of drizzle it over top. But first I want to um, slice my chicken. And you can see it's beautiful white on the side. It still has some give to it so it's not overcooked. It's nice and juicy. Got my bowl here. I'm just going to get some of this rice out of here. Just enough to kind of create a little bed for the chicken. And I want you to see that rice. You can see all those little orange bits in there from the zest. Mm. Now for the chicken. And that's just going to slide right on top. And then last but not least, our glaze. I'm just going to pour some of that right over top. I'm just going to kind of let that cascade over the chicken. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Okay, time to dig in. There we have it, my Korean-style chicken. Let's go ahead and dig in.
I'm gonna get a nice piece of that chicken first. Mmm. Mmm. You can hear that crunch. That's the panko. Gives us a lot of texture. The chicken is perfectly moist. Not overcooked in the least. Nice and juicy. Now the glaze. Mmm, let me tell you. You get a little um, acidity from the orange. Plays nicely with the sweetness of the uh, honey. And then you bite into one of those red pepper flakes. And it's just a fun little surprise. Not too hot. <laughs> just enough. Now my rice. Mmm. Rice is also perfect. Slightly al dente. Just has a little bite to it. I hate mushy rice. Mmm. And you get those fragrant notes from the orange zest. It's just, it's heavy, but it doesn't feel heavy because of all the uh, things we've done here to kind of lighten up the dish. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> so I'm going to finish my dinner here. I will bid you guys adieu. But uh, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for the rest of the season. And until next time, bon appetit.